We're going to take these nightstands from this to that with some raised wallpaper. So you can see where the original holes for the hardware are a little higher. And so we are going to fill those with Bondo and replace with beautiful modern hardware in the middle. So you're going to need to pick up some hardening cream with the Bondo, some tape and a stir stick so that we can fill these holes. I always start by putting some painter's tape on the back of the holes so it doesn't overfill and it'll give it a very nice flush look. So the trick with Bondo is you want to make sure to only mix it in sections. So I'm just going to do enough to fill two drawers. I'm going to make sure that it is fully mixed in. It does dry very, very quickly. So that is why we're going to do this in sections. The two things I like to use with the Bondo is just a stir stick to get it in place and then a scraper that's going to push the product into the holes and it's going to make it easier to sand when it's dry. This stuff is stinky so make sure that you have some windows open if you are working inside and that you are wearing a mask. Now that the Bondo is totally cured, I'm going to come back in with my 3x4 surf prep sander with 180 grit sandpaper and sand it all the way smooth so that you cannot see those original hardware holes. If for some reason it doesn't fully fill where it's completely flush, you can just repeat this process again. Because we're doing the raised wallpaper, it's not going to matter too much. I already cut my pieces and now I'm going to mist them. This is really going to make it so it's a lot more pliable and wrinkle free. Can't go wrong with good old Mod Podge. That's what I'm using for my adhesive. I've tried wallpaper paste and it just seems very gloopy underneath the paper and really hard to get the wrinkles out. I've tried varnish and it's just not quite thick enough. So I just keep coming back to the Mod Podge. A piece of saran wrap is a great tool to use for getting wrinkles out of not only the raised wallpaper, but also decoupage paper. It gets the wrinkles out and you're not gonna tear your paper. Okay, now that it's dry, it's time to cut away all that excess. My favorite tool is just to use a right out of the box, brand new razor blade. I feel like I get a lot more control with it without having to handle. Now I'm gonna come in with my nail file. This will just get all those rough edges and clean it up so it looks like part of the original piece of furniture. I also used it to just score the edges. This makes it so that I can cut it seamlessly. The bottom drawer, I just couldn't quite do it um, when it was in, so I had to take it out and that was a lot easier. Now that everything's cut, I'm just gonna go back with the Mod Podge and just make sure all of those edges are completely down before I paint. With the raised wallpaper, it has so much texture on it, so you're gonna need to go back and forth in many, many different directions to make sure that you get full coverage. If you were wondering if you could use either line of Wiesel paint, you can. I've done both the chalk paint and the one hour enamel on paintable wallpaper and they both work beautifully. You can find any Wiesel products on my website at ignitefurnishingsco.com in the description. This color is so tricky to film. Oh my goodness. This is Wiesel chalk paint in Siren Song and it's actually more of a blue green color than what is showing on this video. Here's the true color in this staged picture. Isn't that wild the difference in color? 
Now that we're done with the raised wallpaper and it's completely painted, we're gonna move on to the next step in our series, where I'll teach you how to get a buttery, smooth, and streak-free finish on those pesky dark colors. Hey, if you have any questions, please comment below. And if you like my content, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe because together we can elevate our furniture and each other. Thanks for watching.